Hey guys, um, so for this video here, I'm going to cover an example that you might see in your homework from uh, maybe 33, 35, or 37. Um, here we're going to use Descartes' rule of signs. So Descartes' rule of signs is, is, is just a uh, way of um, figuring out the possible number of positive, negative, and imaginary zeros that a polynomial may or may not um, have. So, in this problem, we'll use the function g of x is equal to x to the 7th plus 4x to the 4th minus 10x plus 25. So the first thing I do when using Descartes' rule of signs is to find the number of sign changes in g of x. So, number of sign changes in g of x. So, I'll show you what that means. Um, one second. Let me actually move this down a bit. So, here, this is a positive sign here. This first term is positive, and this second term is positive. Third term is negative, fourth term is positive. So, there's no sign change from the first two terms, but there is a sign change from the second to third. So that's one sign change. And then there's a second sign change uh, to, from the third to the fourth. So in total, there are two sign changes. Now, um, in Descartes' rule of signs, it says that we'll take the total number of sign changes and every other number less than that. So zero won't be a possible number of positive real zeros. Uh, sorry, one won't be, but zero will be. So, right there. So, either we're going to have, so this polynomial right here, it, can, it will have either two positive zeros or it's not going to have any positive zeros. Okay, so that's what the Descartes rule of sign says. Now, so, um, second is to find the number of sign changes. and g of negative x. So let's find what g of negative x would be. Now negative x means we are going to change all the x's to negative. Now really in the end what that's going to do, for example, so if I plug in negative x into uh, x to the seventh, so if I have negative x to the seventh, this tells me I'm multiplying negative x by itself seven times over, which would still leave me, well, which would leave me with negative x to the seventh. Now, for something like x to the fourth power, so if I have four negative x to the fourth power, well, because here, negative x is being raised to the fourth power, which means you're multiplying negative x by itself four times over, it's still going to be positive. So this is still going to be 4x to the fourth. So how I like to do this step is just anything, any um, term with a variable to an odd degree, change the sign. And anything to an even degree, keep the sign the same. So g of negative x would be negative x to the seventh plus 4x to the fourth plus 10x plus 25. Okay, so I switched the signs of this term here because its exponent is odd, and here because the exponent is odd, but not here, and not here because this one doesn't have a variable. Okay, um, now I count the number of sign changes just like I did before. <coughs> so here I go from negative positive, that is one sign change. And then I don't change signs at all for the rest of it. So it stays positive. So kind of like the same thing like I did before. I'm going to either have 1, but there's no... Um, so I wouldn't do this right here where I go from uh, 1 to negative 1 because I don't want to have... Uh, I can't have negative number of solutions. So um, we're just going to say 1. So what this tells me is that this polynomial up here is going to have 
one negative solution and only one negative solution. There's no other options. Now to organize this information we use a table. So we'll make a table of positive, negative, imaginary, and total number of solutions. Okay, now we're going to create a table of our, our possibilities. So up here we said that we found that there's either going to be two or zero positive solutions. So let's say, let's entertain the idea that, let's say that there's two positive zeros. Remember that for the negative, we said that there's only going to be one. So there could be two positive and one negative. The total number of zeros is seven. And we know that because the, polyn the degree of the polynomial is seven which means that if we have two positive, one negative, total of seven, that means we should be left with four imaginary zeros. Now this isn't the only possibility, okay? Um, because remember that we could also have zero positive uh, numbers, uh, zeros. And then we'll still have one negative, so we could have zero positive, one negative, and there's still going to be seven, which would leave me with six imaginaries right there. So this polynomial g of x, we're going to find either two positive, one negative, four imaginary, or zero positive, one negative, and six imaginary zeros. So that's what this polynomial, this is what um, Descartes' rule of signs is about. So hopefully this was a good example to get you going on those other ones.